You know, I, I do think that Elon led a push early on to make Twitter a lot leaner. Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg, two of the most influential figures in tech, have clashed repeatedly over their differing visions for the future. There have been many topics over which the two disagreed, and at one point, they were even about to fight. But what led to this intense rivalry between two tech giants, each with global influence? Let's dive into the roots of why Elon Musk hates Mark Zuckerberg. The richest man on Earth. Before we learn the reasons behind the feud behind these tech giants, we first need an insight into their lives. Elon Musk's story begins in Pretoria, South Africa, where he was born on June 28, 1971. From an early age, Elon showed a curiosity and drive that hinted at his future ambitions. Growing up, Elon often spent hours reading and diving into science fiction, comics and technology books, and he developed a deep interest in computers and programming. Elon's family background was a blend of diverse influences. His mother, May, was a model and dietitian from Canada, while his father, Errol, was a South African electromechanical engineer. As a young boy, Elon was known for his intellect and curiosity, but also for his shyness, which made him a target for bullying at school. In fact, he was even physically attacked by other students to the point where he had to be hospitalized. Despite these tough experiences, Elon found a safe space in his books and technology projects, and he developed a particular fascination with computers at an early age. At just 12 years old, he used a manual to teach himself programming, eventually creating a simple video game called Blaster, a space-themed game that he later sold to a computer magazine for $500. This was his first business transaction, and it gave him a taste of what he could achieve with technology and his skills. Elon's education began in South Africa, but he soon felt limited by the environment and began thinking about opportunities abroad. At age 17, he moved to Canada to attend Queen's University in Ontario. He was also seeking a gateway to the United States, where he believed the most exciting advancements in technology were happening. Elon's move was a strategic decision, not just an escape, as he sought out new challenges and opportunities to work toward his vision of the future. During his time there, he and a fellow student rented a large house off campus and converted it into a nightclub, charging entrance fees to fund their activities. Elon graduated in 1997 and was accepted into a PhD program in Applied Physics and Materials Science at Stanford. However, his time at Stanford was brief. He left after just two days, realizing that the pace of technological innovation in Silicon Valley was exactly where he wanted to be, and he couldn't afford to wait. He wasn't afraid to take risks, and he was willing to make sacrifices for what he believed were greater opportunities. Instead of continuing with school, Elon co-founded his first company, Zip2, in 1996. Zip2 was an online business directory that provided maps and listings to newspapers, an early version of what Google Maps and Yelp offer today. Their startup caught the attention of several major players in Silicon Valley, and in 1999, the computer company Compaq acquired Zip2 for nearly $300 million. After Zip2, Elon started X in 1999, an online payment company with a vision to revolutionize the financial industry. It eventually became PayPal, one of the first digital payment platforms. PayPal grew rapidly, but he often clashed with other executives over his ambitious ideas, and his unconventional management style led to some friction within the company. In 2002, eBay acquired PayPal for $1.5 billion. Elon used the funds from PayPal to launch his next set of companies, which would prove to be his most significant. In 2002, he founded SpaceX, a private aerospace company aimed at making space travel more affordable and eventually enabling human life on Mars. This venture was highly risky, as no private company had successfully launched rockets into orbit, and the space industry was historically dominated by government agencies. 
Elon invested $100 million of his own money into SpaceX, and the company faced several setbacks, including multiple failed rocket launches. However, after years of persistence, SpaceX succeeded, and in 2008, it became the first private company to send a rocket to the International Space Station. Around the same time, Elon co-founded Tesla in 2004. Elon took a hands-on approach at Tesla, overseeing design and engineering, and he invested millions of his own money to keep the company afloat. By 2012, Tesla launched the Model S, which received widespread praise and helped to shift public perception about electric vehicles. In addition to SpaceX and Tesla, Elon founded other ventures, each aimed at tackling what he saw as critical issues for the future of humanity. These included SolarCity, which promoted solar energy solutions, Neuralink, which explores brain-machine interfaces, and The Boring Company, which focuses on developing underground transportation tunnels. But to understand why he hates Mark Zuckerberg, let's learn more about him and see where the two first clashed. The Mastermind Behind Meta Mark Zuckerberg's story begins on May 14, 1984, in White Plains, New York. His father was a dentist, and his mother was a psychiatrist. Growing up, Mark was the second of four children and showed signs of brilliance early on. He was always interested in computers and technology, spending a lot of his childhood tinkering with software and programming. From an early age, Mark displayed a keen intellect and a knack for problem solving. By the age of 12, he created a messaging program called Zucknet, which allowed the computers in his father's dental practice to communicate with each other. This is the first, but not the last, of the similarities between the two tech giants, maybe a reason why their feud started in the first place. After graduating high school, he enrolled at Harvard in 2002, where he initially pursued a degree in psychology. At Harvard, Mark's passion for technology and social networking took center stage. He quickly became involved in a number of projects and was fascinated by the concept of connecting people online. In his sophomore year, he developed FaceMash, students' photos side by side, and vote on who was more attractive. Although FaceMash was short-lived as Harvard shut it down after a few days due to privacy concerns, it gained attention and showcased Mark's ability to create engaging online platforms. Inspired by the response to FaceMash, Mark began working on a more ambitious project. In 2004, along with his college roommates Eduardo Saverin, Andrew McCollum, Dustin Moskowitz, and Chris Hughes, he launched the Facebook. Initially designed as a social network for Harvard students, the Facebook allowed users to create profiles, connect with friends, and share information. The website quickly gained popularity, expanding to other Ivy League schools and then to universities across the United States and Canada. As the Facebook grew, it attracted the attention of investors. Mark and his team recognized the potential of their creation and decided to focus on it full-time. They dropped out of college in 2004 to pursue the business, moving to California, where they found office space and began to develop the platform further. This decision was a significant turning point in Mark's life. He traded the stability of education for the uncertain but exciting world of entrepreneurship. With the support of investors, including Peter Thiel, a co-founder of PayPal next to Elon Musk, the Facebook transformed into Facebook. The platform continued to expand rapidly and became known for its user-friendly interface, encouraging more people to join and share their lives online. By 2006, Facebook had evolved from a college social network into a global platform and opened its doors to anyone over the age of 13 with a valid email address. This strategy was critical in positioning Facebook as a leader in the social media landscape. As Facebook's popularity soared, so did its valuation. Mark's stake in the company made him one of the youngest billionaires ever. Over the years, Facebook expanded its services by acquiring several other companies, including Instagram and WhatsApp. These acquisitions allowed Mark to diversify the company's offerings and further solidify Facebook's dominance in social media and messaging. 
His strategy was to create an ecosystem where users could communicate, share, and interact seamlessly across different platforms. Beyond Facebook, Mark has also expressed a desire to address broader societal challenges. In 2015, he and his wife founded a philanthropic organization aimed at advancing human potential and promoting equal opportunity. Through this initiative, they focus on areas such as education, science, and social justice, committing to donate the majority of their wealth to various causes. In 2021, his company rebranded from Facebook to Meta, but the app names stayed the same. But Mark's influence extends beyond Meta. He is often at the forefront of discussions about the future of technology and its impact on society. He advocates for advancements in artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and connectivity, aiming to create a more inclusive digital world. Although these two are some of the greatest minds today, their differences in opinion over the years have started a feud that has been slowly growing in the last decade. The feud begins. The relationship between Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg has always been marked by innovation and rivalry. Both have played significant roles in shaping the technology landscape, but their paths have often crossed in ways that fueled public intrigue, particularly when it comes to their differing perspectives on artificial intelligence and the occasional fallout over business ventures. In 2016, a pivotal moment in their relationship unfolded when Elon's company SpaceX experienced a significant setback. SpaceX was contracted to launch a Facebook satellite called Amos 6, intended to provide internet access to underserved regions of the world. The satellite represented a crucial step in Mark's vision of connecting billions of people, especially in underdeveloped countries. Unfortunately, during a routine test on September 1st, the Falcon 9 rocket exploded on the launch pad, destroying both the rocket and the satellite. Mark publicly expressed his dissatisfaction on Facebook, stating he was deeply disappointed to hear that SpaceX launch failure destroyed their satellite. Elon didn't respond, but behind the scenes, the hate between the two was growing. Elon's response to the incident came a bit later, as he took to Twitter in 2018 to address the situation. He acknowledged the failure in an ironic way by saying it was his fault for being an idiot. He said they gave them a free launch to make up for it and that they had insurance, basically saying that Mark has no right to hold a grudge. This tweet, laced with a mix of humor and honesty, highlighted Elon's willingness to accept responsibility, albeit with a touch of irony. However, it also reflected the competitive and sometimes contentious relationship between the two tech titans. The feud between Musk and Zuckerberg did not rest solely on the SpaceX incident. In 2017, the topic of artificial intelligence became a major point of contention between the two. During a Facebook Live session, a viewer posed a question about Musk's concerns regarding artificial intelligence, a subject that Elon had frequently warned about, often referring to it as one of the greatest threats to humanity. In response, Zuckerberg expressed his optimism about AI's potential. He cannot understand the people who are naysayers about the topic and try to make doomsday scenarios. He even went on to say it was irresponsible. Mark's remarks underscored his belief that AI could drive significant advancements and improve lives rather than pose an existential threat. However, this optimism was met with skepticism from Elon, who had long warned about the dangers of unregulated AI development. Shortly after the comments, Elon said he had talked to Mark about the topic and that his understanding of the subject was limited. The exchange over AI was not just a matter of personal disagreement, it symbolized a broader debate within the tech community. While Elon advocates for caution and regulation in AI development, warning that it could become uncontrollable and harmful, Mark emphasizes the importance of advancing technology for the greater good. As the years progressed, the feud took on new dimensions, with both leaders continuing to speak out on various issues. The dynamics of their relationship have also been influenced by external factors, such as regulatory scrutiny and public sentiment. Facebook has faced criticism over privacy issues, misinformation, and its impact on society, which has led to calls for increased regulation. Elon, who has also faced his share of scrutiny regarding Tesla and SpaceX, often found himself weighing in on such matters, sometimes criticizing the tech industry's handling of these challenges.
X versus Facebook reached another level when Elon openly criticized Mark's approach to social media and its societal impact. He showcased his disdain for Facebook's influence and its handling of controversial issues. Elon's hate towards Facebook and Mark reached a dramatic point in early 2018 when he decided to sever ties with the platform altogether. His comments were a reflection of the growing concerns surrounding misinformation and social media's role in shaping public opinion. Mark, of course, disagreed, but it was one of the main reasons why Elon bought Twitter and stated he wouldn't cancel anyone. It all began when deleting Facebook started trending on social media. The movement gained momentum following the fallout from the Cambridge Analytica scandal, which revealed that millions of Facebook users' data had been harvested without their consent. As public outrage grew over privacy violations and the misuse of data, influential figures began calling for people to delete their Facebook accounts. Among those voices was Brian Acton, the co-founder of WhatsApp, who encouraged users to ditch the platform. Elon joined the conversation with a tweet that caught the attention of many. What's Facebook? This seemingly casual remark reflected his dismissal of the platform amid rising concerns over privacy and ethical practices. His decision to delete the Facebook accounts of his companies, Tesla and SpaceX, was a bold statement of defiance against the tech giant. In a follow-up tweet, he mentioned that he was unaware of SpaceX's Facebook page, saying he didn't even know there was one. The significance of these actions was twofold. First, it highlighted a growing skepticism towards Facebook and its practices. Elon's stance resonated with a segment of the public that was increasingly wary of the platform's role in data privacy issues and the spread of misinformation. By removing his company's accounts, he aligned himself with a movement that called for greater accountability and transparency from social media platforms. Also, the comments added to the feud between him and Mark. While both are tech titans in their own right, their visions for the future often clash. Unlike Mark, who has built an empire on the principles of social networking and online community engagement, Elon has often relied on direct communication with his audience through Twitter. He utilizes the platform to share updates, tease new products, and engage with fans and critics alike. In contrast, Mark has faced significant challenges in recent years. Facebook's reputation has been tarnished by numerous controversies, the spread of false information, and the platform's influence on political discourse. These challenges have put him in a difficult position. In the years that followed, the rivalry continued to play out in various ways. Elon has been even more active and critical on Twitter, which he renamed to X when he acquired it. While Mark didn't have much to say at that point, as he battled public scrutiny and even had to defend himself before Congress. The Cage Match In 2023, their feud reached the largest point yet. What began as a comment from Elon evolved into a potential showdown between two of the most influential figures in the tech industry. The saga started when Elon casually tweeted that he would be willing to fight Mark in a cage match. This declaration quickly gained traction, with fans and media alike weighing in on the prospect of a real-life brawl between the two billionaires. The notion was both absurd and intriguing, two of the most powerful men in the world, known for their work in technology and innovation, stepping into an octagon. Elon, with his tall frame and larger build, seemed to have the physical advantage on the surface. However, while he boasted about his willingness to step into the ring, it became apparent that he wasn't exactly in peak physical condition. Elon's background is more rooted in tech entrepreneurship than athleticism, and many wondered if he could keep up in a rigorous physical contest against a trained opponent. On the other hand, Mark already had a solid foundation in martial arts, specifically Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He had been training for years, taking classes and even rolling with top-tier fighters like Israel Adesanya, 
the UFC middleweight champion, and Alec Volkanovsky, the UFC featherweight champion. These sessions with elite athletes gave Mark a significant edge in grappling and submission techniques. His experience in jiu-jitsu meant he understood the mechanics of fighting and was likely more comfortable in a high-pressure situation inside the cage. But with little training, Elon had a large possibility to come up on top due to having six inches more in height and over a hundred pounds in weight on Mark. This difference is far from small and there is a reason why weight categories exist in fighting sports. As excitement grew over the potential match, the two engaged in a back and forth on social media, trading light jabs and insults. Fans began to imagine what the event could look like, picturing a high-profile cage match that might even be streamed online for millions to watch. The idea was not just about the fight, it was a collision of personalities, contrasting their very different approaches to life and business. Both were deep in training, and Elon even envisioned the match happening in the Coliseum with live streams on both of their platforms. However, as the buzz intensified, the reality of organizing such a spectacle began to settle in. Promoting a legitimate fight between two billionaires involves legal, logistical, and safety considerations that quickly complicate the idea. There were discussions about the venue, potential rules, and safety measures that needed to be put in place. Despite the initial enthusiasm, the fight never materialized, and it was announced that the match was officially off. While no specific reasons were cited, there were several factors at play. First, both men are incredibly busy with their respective ventures. Despite their long-lasting feud and Elon's hate towards Mark, juggling the demands of their companies with the training required for a fight has proven too much, especially considering the public scrutiny. Moreover, the sheer absurdity of the idea began to weigh on the seriousness of their brands. Both Elon and Mark are influential figures in their industries, and engaging in a potentially staged fight could have had negative repercussions for their reputations. Fighting in a cage is no small feat, it comes with risks, and both men would need to consider the potential for injury. The public was left to ponder what could have been. And while the cage match never happened, their feud didn't stop. Recent Development Recently, the ongoing rivalry between Elon and Mark has seen new developments. One of the most notable moments occurred when Elon took to Twitter to express his views on Meta's platforms. He criticized Instagram, suggesting that it contributes to feelings of depression among its users. This comment came at a time when discussions about mental health and social media's impact on well-being were at the forefront of public discourse. This is the biggest reason why Elon Musk hates Mark Zuckerberg. He's a liar. This remark was directed towards Mark because of many safety controversies in which Meta was involved. Elon's statement echoed broader concerns about the psychological effects of social media, particularly among younger users. In addition to Instagram, Elon also cast doubt on the reliability of WhatsApp. He described the messaging platform as something that cannot be trusted, further escalating tensions with Mark. His remarks seem to aim not only at Meta's products, but also at the broader conversation about privacy and security in the digital age. This critique was significant given that WhatsApp has been advertised for its end-to-end -end encryption and has millions of users relying on it for private communication. Mark's response to these developments was funny. Shortly after the launch of Threads, a new app designed to compete with Twitter, he made headlines by posting on Twitter for the first time in over a decade. His choice to share the pointing Spider-Man meme was particularly loaded. This highlighted the competitive landscape between Threads and Twitter, again drawing attention to the feud that has developed not just between him and Elon, but also among their respective platforms. Is Elon right to hate Mark? Let us know in the comments.